Welcome back to uh, our channel and uh, in this video I would like to do a review of our cabin tender uh, wood cook stove. <clears throat> the cabin tender is made by Ashland uh, and they have a larger model called the Ashland Deluxe I believe and if you want to see a full review and, and a series of videos on the larger Ashland you can go to um, Christian Country Living on YouTube uh, our friend John Erickson up in North Dakota has purchased a larger one and he's got, a, I don't know, several videos uh, reviewing the Ashland, how it functions, how to use it, and even some suggestions on, on uh, baking in it and stuff. And that's Christian Country Living on YouTube. Um, but this is the smaller model that Ashland makes. Again, it's called the Cabin Tender. We purchased this, uh, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, Stoves and More in West Virginia, they have a website, uh, I guess it's stovesandmore.com. Uh, I believe that they are the sole distributor of the cabin tender wood cook stove. Um, <clears throat> the only stove that's actually comparable to the cabin tender, as far as I know, is called the Baker's Choice. And if I can, I'll try to do a review of a Baker's Choice too. I do have a friend. Uh, a couple of friends locally that that have the Baker's Choice to see how they how they compare with the cabin tender. Our home is roughly 1,500 square feet, and this stove is designed for smaller homes. In my opinion, it's just slightly undersized for our house. In my husband's opinion, it's just fine, um, but we make do. Um, our, our bat, we designed our home with a very open floor plan so that the wood stove would be able to distribute heat evenly. But our bathroom is, is off of our bedroom and there's a wall um, for privacy. There's no door, but you go around the wall. And the, the bathroom in the dead of winter will be in the low 60s, which to me is really chilly for a bathroom. That's the one room you'd like to be warm. So we're going to eventually get a, um, like a, just a little small, uh, propane uh, heater to go in our bathroom and that'll be the only other heat source besides the cabin tender. Uh, it probably would be ideal for a house around a thousand to twelve hundred square feet for a really small cabin it would it would be overkill. But because our walls are nine inches thick and we have really good insulation and everything um, we do okay with the cabin tender. It, it's, it, the, the main living area is kept quite warm. Um, we do have to get up, if it's really cold, we have to get up in the night and bank it again during the night. But uh, other than that, it works fine. Now I've zoomed in on the stove top here. It did uh, come with the stainless steel top, which last year um, our only source of hot water was the stove. And I had big kettles sitting on there, and as I would dip water out, it would get water on the stovetop. So we did have some rust, but um, what what we do whenever we clean the stovetop and prepare it um, to be re uh, reconditioned is we just take one of these little green scrubbies like this, or a real fine steel wool, and and um, smooth that down, get the rust off, and then take a dry towel and and uh, wipe that off or you can vacuum it while the stove is cool. And, uh, and then I use coconut oil but some of the Mennonites use WD-40 which I really didn't want to do. The coconut oil does smoke but it, it kind of it does nicely I think. I think you probably could use other types of oil but that's what I've done. I use just a little bit of coconut oil. I may try the WD-40 in the future. So I've kind of zoomed in on the uh, zoomed in on the surface of the stove here. I wanted to show you. Um, this is something I decided to try. Um, I did show you the little green scotch brake pad that I had scrubbed and this has already been scrubbed <clears throat> and wiped with a dry paper towel. I decided to try uh, wiping vinegar across because I clean uh, other cast iron stuff. This is stainless steel though it's not cast iron. But at any rate I decided to try it and see how it would do. And you can see over here it actually did fairly well. It took a lot of that rust off. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to I'm going to wipe the stove top with the vinegar and then show you how I condition it.
it's a much warmer morning today, so it's a good time to get this done. Okay, as you can see, that did pretty good. It took the, that loose rust off of there, and that looks much better. So I'm just going to take some coconut oil and just rub it into the surface. And this will help to condition the surface. It will smoke the next time I fire the stove up, but it won't be that bad. It won't last long. We'll just open the windows. You need to have a window cracked anyway when you heat and wood. We're almost done here. Um, I will say, you typically are supposed to condition your stove right before you put it in the storage for the summer months. And then um, they have these tablecloths that are like vinyl on one side and fuzzy on the other side. You condition it and then place one of those on there and it helps to keep it from rusting on those humid uh, summer days. But I needed to do it now anyway because I had some rust on there because we had so much water heating on here. Last year we kept dripping it and it did rust a little bit. So that's refinished. Looks pretty good. Now, as you notice, the, the wood box is on this side. The oven is on this side. I do have two oven racks for it. It tends to cook hot on the top and on this side next to the uh, wood box, so you have to kind of rotate your stuff and really watch your brick. If you're cooking on the surface, this is high, medium, and low is over here like where this uh, water is. I'm heating some water to do a treatment on my hands. Right now I don't want it to get too hot. The warming shelf is such a blessing because this side of the warming shelf, which is right over the wood box, is roughly comparable to the heat that you have on the surface there but not quite as hot and so even on the warming shelf you have degrees of heat this is is almost so hot that i can't leave my hand on it and then it it cools as you go over this way um, i'll show some other features of the stove uh, in just a little bit i do want to mention here this little fan that we have it, it works on uh, it's a thermoelectric. It converts thermal energy into electrical energy to, to run the fan with no electricity. And it really makes a difference. Even though it's small, it helps to push heat back into our bedroom. So I highly recommend those. We got this one off of eBay for like, I think, $45. And when it's at a certain speed, it rattles and makes a racket. So that's probably why it was sold. Um, one other feature that I want to show you, and let me adjust the camera angle here so that you can see. If you can look at our stovepipe there, um, it is discolored now because of the heat, but we opted to go with the stainless steel um, stovepipes. And the reason for that is because the other option is the it's either black or really dark blue. Uh, stovepipe. Those stovepipes have to be replaced, if not yearly, they should be replaced at least every two to three years. From what I'm told, uh, and I've never had a stove that I used the, the stainless steel, I always use the black stuff. From what I've told, that stainless steel never has to be replaced. I mean, unless you have some, you know, something hits it or whatever, you know, you drop it when you're cleaning it or something, but it's supposed to last much longer. Ashland Cabin Tender, this is right on the front of the oven here. Um, that thermometer, I think I mentioned in another part of the video I did already, runs, it, it's not entirely accurate. And so what I've done is I've just um, purchased a thermometer and put on the inside there. And I think it's gotten fried because it's been exposed to some pretty high temperatures. I do have the two oven racks, but I, I really, um, I've only used one at a time because it does cook so hot. Um, usually I start out with stuff right down on the, on the bottom surface of the oven and then I'll move it up. If I want to make Zweibach uh, or toast for breakfast, um, I'll put it here on the rack and it, oh, it, it's just delicious. It, it's just wonderful stuff. Um, if you're cooking on the surface of the stove, 
you can, and I know some people who use the gas uh, propane stoves, which we do have a gas propane stove that we use in the summertime. Um, you can use one of these, a trivet, to put on to keep your stuff from burning on the bottom, and that's a, that's a really helpful thing. Another thing that I wanted to mention about uh, the cabin tender is that you uh, can use this in the summer with what's called the summer grate. Um, it fits in here and it fits, I don't know why it makes that pop, um, but it, it fits at about this level and so you have very little space. There's a shield here that I believe is, has something to do with the air dis distribution because there's a hole in it up there. But at any rate, that summer grate will sit at about this height. Um, that essentially, it, it does work. It does keep the heat right here and it doesn't heat up the house so much. But it essentially turns your wood stove into a glorified rocket stove. You have to feed it little bitty pieces like this almost continually to keep the fire going. It's, it's not so easy to keep the fire going. Also, uh, and we did not opt to do this, uh, we do have the what they call the water jacket, um, and it fits on this side here. You, you take out the full fire bricks on this side, and you replace it with some shorter ones, and then it's a, a heavy steel casing with a uh, pipe running through it, and I'll show you on the back uh, where, where it fits, and you can actually heat your water in the wood box like that and have a, a wood a, um, water tank an elevated water tank and uh, you can heat your household water that way but we um, we don't have that installed on our stove. I'll show you on the back side where the outlets are for that. Right here is uh, where the uh, the water would come out if you were using this stove to heat your water. Just sh to show you the uh, shaker grate, I'm cleaning the stove out and it's got the little handle here. I apologize the lighting may not be the best. Uh, anyway you can see this little knob here uh, that your shaker rod will fit onto. Um, put that on there. Of course you got the ash pan underneath and we strongly recommend that you keep a pair of real heavy gloves next to your stove. Um, to take the ash pan out. I'll show you that in just a minute. But uh, you can see it. You can shake the... And I'm really cleaning it out more than I need to because we're going to clean the chimney a little bit later, hopefully. Um, it actually... <clears throat> the stove will start better uh, if you have some ashes on the shaker grate. Um, it, it's a little too much air initially, I guess. Uh, it has a better draw if you got a little bit of ashes there. But anyway, you can see when you shake this, your ashes will fall down into the, the ash pan below here. And uh, I just uh, put on a pair of heavy gloves, put the uh, metal bucket underneath the little lip here, and then you can pull the ash pan out. And uh, carefully ease the ashes down into the ash bucket. Now, you do have to uh, dust a whole lot more when you do this. And then you can use the ash pan as a shovel to get more because some will be left up in there. And you can kind of use it as a shovel to go back up in there and scoop up whatever extra may be there to get out. But there's not too much in there. Um, so that's a little bit about the shaker grade and the ash pan. and The, uh, the firebox uh, on this, the cabin tender, uh, is a little bit smaller. It's, I think the uh, Baker's, I have a friend who has a Baker's Choice, which is, so far as I am aware, um, the only stove that's comparable to the cabin tender uh, is, is the Baker's Choice. I have a friend who has one, and they said that they think that the, uh, the wood box is a little deeper. I'll try to get the dimensions on that. Actually, I would like to get with my friend. I have actually three friends that have the Baker's Choice. Um, five of us have the cabin tender. Uh, but only a few of us are using them yet. But the wood box on this cabin tender is not so big. Um, it's big enough that if you bank it up real, real full, you'll only have to get up once in the night if it's really cold to keep it going. 
uh, we did get the model with the flame view door and that is a very nice feature uh, of the stove and uh, of course I have two oven racks I only use the one for the most part um, if if I'm baking something a lot of times I'll just put it right on the surface uh, of the, the floor of the oven because things tend to burn on the, the top of the oven it it cooks very very hot right next to the um, the wood box there it cooks hot there and on the top anyway there's a little flap that when you're cooking um, you raise this to the up position and that uh, that's uh, I should have it down actually because I'm not baking I was baking stuff in there earlier in the up position it allows the heat to circulate around the oven a lot better and uh, bake more evenly but it is uh, it is very prone to burn on the top so if you're baking something on that shelf it's a good idea to have it covered or to start out baking right on the floor of the oven and then move it up and sometimes if I'm if I'm just trying to warm something and the oven's trying to get too hot I'll flip this handle around like that and open this one and sort of leave it cracked just a little bit that lets you know some of the heat come out you know, so that it's not quite so hot in there of course the ashes you can spread on your garden or compost pile just be sure that you watch out for those live coals and combustibles another thing I will mention is sometimes um, when you cut firewood you don't always know that there's metal embedded in that I'm not sure how we miss these two pieces um, but when I was trying to clean out the ashes just a little bit ago uh, this one of these or both of them probably went down into the shaker grate and and locked it up and I had that's why I had to clean out so many ashes because the wire got down in there so try to avoid using wood that has obvious metal embedded in it these right here, this little door here, and that little door right there are clean outs to when you clean out the chimney, the stuff falls from down in the chimney uh, into a, a chamber below here, and that's where you clean out the, the garbage, the soot and chrysote and whatever has built up in your chimney, hopefully not chrysote, but anyway, this right here permits you to clean the side of the stuff. Right here is the thermostat. The, the cabin tender um, is controlled by a thermostat. Ashlyn, um, I'm trying to get it so that my light is not leaving a... We don't have our solar hooked up yet, but at any rate, uh, light is of a premium still. Um, the, uh, the thermostat dial there controls this little door, which is directly attached to the ash box area around here if you if I can I'm not sure if I could get it to show up it's underneath here let's look and I'll show you ash box is probably there. you can see the opening for the uh, I'm not sure if it's showing up but yeah you can see the opening that allows air to draw from underneath the fire uh, giving it enough oxygen to burn and it controls how much now when you're burning and you need it you need your fire to get going a little faster you can actually open this door as well but I certainly don't recommend doing that unless you're tending it because your fire will roar because it's getting so much oxygen this little door here is just a swing door and uh, I'm not sure if you can be able to see in there all it is is that exposes the side of the uh, stove on the outside you know, in, the, in the wall, in the inner wall there and then this little door here just has wing nuts that you take off and uh, let me take that off and I'll show you okay I've got the little door off there you can see we have quite a bit of junk on there and uh, inside there you can see we're in need of of cleaning it out which we plan to do hopefully when Kalen gets home he'll he'll do this, the part from the top by the way I could not get this device in here which I kind of anticipated 
but this poker rod uh, also comes with it and I was able to get that in the other hole there and scrape that side of the stove so here I'm just gonna pull out some of the stuff in, in, underneath the stove and stuff and you can see it's quite a bit of junk in there We've been using this. Oof, I've got a dust. We've been using this stove for almost a year. And so uh, some of the wood that we had was a little bit wet. Uh, you know, we were just kind of starting off and didn't have everything just like we would like it. And so that tends to build up more junk in your stove. So be sure that you burn um, good dry wood. If you haven't seen our video called firewood facts i encourage you to go over and check that out well it worked but when he tried to go too fast with the string from the top it made like a billows below and that's why i look like this um but i think because the sack of rocks completely occludes and the air pushes back and forth. It's actually going to be better to get the nylon brush, but this worked. The chimney does look clean. What we did was we tied, uh, I couldn't film it because it took both hands for sure, and uh, we're trying to get done. But I tied a string to the top and the bottom of a sack of rocks, and then I put a plastic bag over the, uh, the chimney hole and the ceiling. Actually, I planned to leave the chimney on and take it loose at the elbow but it it came down uh, we don't have it screwed at the top <coughs> excuse me and it came down so we just went ahead and took that piece outside and I could take the camera out there and uh, show you how we use this and that cleaning it out well, here's the contraption that we use the uh, rope on both ends which my kitty is trying to play with. And we just drop one side down and we pulled this through the chimney up and down. And like I said, this completely occluded just about the, uh, the chimney, so it made like a billows. And uh, even though I had my sack around the, the bottom of the chimney, it still got me pretty messy. So next time, we'll take it loose at the elbow and uh, Hopefully we'll be able to afford a nylon brush by then and the rods. This is the uh, elbow that was on there and you can see there's quite a bit of stuff. This was, you know, without having run anything through the chimney, there's quite a bit of stuff there in that elbow. That's not a good thing to leave that in there. It's good to keep your chimney clean. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that's a good idea. I was just wondering about that. You gonna be black or kitty? Let's roll it another corner. Here we go. So there is access to the top of the stove, besides from the wood box can go through the back. And you see the little, I'll, uh, I'll open the little flap that will let you see the flap that allows, if you look in the hole, and you can see the little flap that's what allows the heat to circulate around the stove when you're baking. You can see it. 